Hey everybody, I am Phoenix Tremaine. You may or may not have watched my reviews in the past. I'm actually kind of got a new hairstyle. I finally changed my hairstyle after like 15 years. So, um, I used to do reviews all the time. Got Luckily, some of my reviews got thousands of hits. And um, then YouTube decided to uh, put me on probation and lock my shit down. It's my Hot Zone TV is my other YouTube page. And um, so I could only do 15 minutes of video and I'm a long-winded motherfucker. So 15 minutes is usually not nearly enough for me. But um, I've been watching some shows. Black Ink Crew. Real Housewives of Atlanta Reunion. And it's made me feel a certain type of way. So I figure why not use my other YouTube page that only has one video on it. So I can, you know, upload what the fuck I want to load. And then, um, you know, I can talk to y'all again. So, uh, like, subscribe, all that good stuff for me. Um, I'm sort of starting over. Um, and also, hopefully, you'll get to know me in my crazy-ass life. And eventually, you'll be watching my productions. And maybe you'll be reviewing my shit soon. So, um, I'm going to do my review of Black Ink Crew. I'm refreshing my memory, so I've actually got the show on. That's why I've got this earpiece in. Um, just to remind myself of the scenes that I saw. It was driving me crazy. But this is Black Ink Crew Season 2, Episode 17. And um, we're still on this Duchess and uh, Caesar, you know, relationship shit. And um, so last episode they broke up. And um, now this is the aftermath. And um, the show starts off with Caesar talking to Sky, and um, asking her, you know, why are you seeing her? Like, you can't be friends. You're my employee, but you can't be friends with people who I don't like. Makes no sense, but, you know, it's Black Ink Crew. Um, and so Sky's pretty much telling him, look, you did her wrong. You did her dirty. You need to talk to her. And by the way, you need a tattoo artist. You know, that's a female in the shop. I mean, it's not, I mean... Let's face it, it's Dutch's fault that most of my motherfuckers is gone anyway. But, um, you know, he's feeling all guilty. And then, you know, Duchess and Caesar are both on this shit where they're like, you know, want you to feel sorry for them. So now Caesar's like, oh, I'm in so much pain right now. And because I was fucked with when I was younger and never felt love for my mother, then uh, I get to treat women like shit. And they have to take it because, you know, my past. <laughs> oh, well, at least he didn't seem gay in this episode. Nothing wrong with gayness. I mean, my new show has gay characters. But, but, really. And then, you know, we got our, you know, Puma and Sassy fix with Puma and Sassy uh, visiting the shop. And they really had nothing to do this episode, you know, just getting the 411 on, you know, pretty much what's going on. And we haven't been here in a while and, you know, snore, yawn. I usually like Puma and Sassy, but they really had nothing to do. But, you know, they just start talking about oh shit's engagement and, you know, how it's really stupid for oh shit to be engaged. And we'll get to that later. But, um... You know, I'm scrolling through the episode, you know, Duchess and Caesar is at, at kind of sort of lunch, even though they didn't look like they brought anything. They're just on the set. And the thing is, I'm a producer. Okay, I've been producing for like 20 years. No, yet. you know, unless you're local, you probably haven't seen my shit. You know, hopefully soon I'll be national. But, you know, Duchess has to take a job at Black Ink. I mean, bottom line is, the show is called Black Ink Crew, not Black Ink Friends. So, Dutch is in order to keep getting checks from the show and to stay on the show, they have to find a way to keep Duchess in the shop. So, C's apologizes to her and, you know, he's like, can I get a hug? And she's like, no, you just cheated on me, like, probably like a week ago, and you want to hug me. You cheated a, with a bitch unprotected sex after we had sex that same day or the day before. And, um, no, I don't want you to hug me. Well, because in the real world, they wouldn't even be sitting at that table. 
the real world, she would have that knife sitting next to her and she'd be trying to stab his ass for, like, trying to, like, you know, get all up on her. You know, especially without a present. He didn't bring her no, no flowers, no, no candy, no, no nothing to be like, you know, I know this is your favorite. I know you don't like me right now, but here you go. I mean, sometimes you got to assuage a little bit when you fucked up, you know. But, you know, he he apologizes and basically gives her a job back. And, you know, she accepts because, like I said, she wants to be on the show. And so, you know, next we get, you know, they're still doing their thing. Then, you know, they get uh, Oh Shit and Will or Walt? I can't remember his name. I think it's Walt. And Walt, who never has a storyline, he had like one episode where he had kind of sort of a storyline about his father that died. You know, other than that, I mean, he's just a guy with kids that he ain't paying for like all the other people on the show. And, um, you know, he's basically telling those shit, it's a bad idea to get married because you're not ready. And those shit's like, you don't know. And he's like, and I'm bringing all these women together. And he's like, that's stupid. And those shit's like, no, it's not stupid. You know, we got to be a family. I might be going to jail. So they all have to get along with like sister wives. Yeah. Really? Um, no. Not going to happen. So. And then, you know, he basically does a good tattoo of a girl with a rose. You know. And then... Here's one of the things that got me in this episode. You've got Duchess coming back to the show. Now, did we miss something? You know, Duchess spent probably the second part of this season two apologizing, crying. She cries every single episode to the point where you're like, bitch, stop crying. You know, so Duchess cries in every episode now. They spent last episode, last season, making me hate the bitch. You know, the first half of season two, making me hate her. To the point where she's, like, in Jamaica, wherever they went. And, you know, he's she's, like, on the floor, like, having a heart attack or something. And I'm like, okay, yeah, right, bitch. I don't believe anything you do at this point. You figured everything. I, I But, you know, if then this season, she talk to sassy again and i'm like sassy don't i don't trust you but we're all on the same show so let's get along and then you know you know she spends all these episodes trying to get her act together and get people to like her and accept her now that her and the aren't together that now that maybe everybody can be friends and sing you know kumbaya and all that kind of shit and um as soon as she comes back to the shop she comes through the door not speaking and I've been in situations, work situations, where people don't speak. And it's like, when I speak to someone, I'm like, hey, good morning. And they, like, walk by me or just don't acknowledge. And I'm like, okay, well, fuck you. I will never say good morning to you again in life. If you say it to me, I will still give you attitude. Like, you know what? I'm not for the fake and phony and this stuff. We all go through shit. It takes 30 seconds to say good morning. But... Duchess is coming back into a situation. She should have been the first one out of her mouth to say, hey, what's up? Because all these people are apprehensive because you burnt them, tried to get them fired, ran them out the shop, but now they're supposed to kiss your ass because you're back and say, oh, hey, welcome back. It ain't the whole hell welcome, welcome back. They're trying to test the water. It's like, now nah, how is she coming in? She came in like, fuck you people. I'm doing my job. I'm in the back. You know, hey, Sky, how you doing? So, so, you know, and then she starts crying again. Starts crying again. And then, you know, this new guy comes in and Dutch is like, oh, they say he's a rapper. And obviously, this motherfucker is a very good client because even though he wants you to put like four fucking spots, on, you know, money signs on his face. Mm. really you have your whole entire face tattooed well you better be a good fucking rapper because I don't know what kind of job you're going to get in the real world when you've tattooed your it's bad enough you you know tattoo your body to the point where you can't hide it 
because I worked in jobs like Sierra Military Health Services where they said if you have tattoos it could be 90 degrees outside, it could be 100 degrees outside but you cannot have any visible tattoos in a corporate place. So you, if you need to wear a turtleneck because you got tattoos all up your neck then you need to wear a turtleneck in the summertime and it's just as simple as that. So when you're young you do shit and then you get older and go oh wow I rebelled and did all the shit I can't change. Could you imagine how messed up his face would be doing a tattoo removal where your whole entire face is tattooed? Really? And then you add four more. Even Duchess is like, where are we going to put these tattoos? Oh, right here, 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 and here. And then she pretty much called the boy gay. <laughs> what kind of rapper is he with Gucci? You know, Gucci tattoos all over his head. <laughs> And, and and then Duchess have just said with me scrolling through twice, I am who I am. Oh, bitch, who are you? I mean, really, who the fuck is Duchess? She's got like 10 fucking faces. And so she does the worst thing she can do, just like the guy with all the fucking tattoos on his face. Duchess decides she want to get herself some titties. The time to get yourself some titties is not after a breakup. Because you really got to think about that shit. I mean, it's major surgery. Now, if you want to get yourself some titties, get yourself some titties. But do it because it's a decision you've made after, you know, when you're not being emotional. Because I can see her now. Yeah, I got these big ass titties now. See, so he's really going to want me. That's what she's doing. And he'll cheat on again. And then, you know, somebody I met mentioned I don't know if it was Ashley or um Bondi Blue where talking about Sky doesn't have any ass. Well she said it herself. You know, she wants some ass implants and the bitch told her to do some squats some squats. Now the thing is I'm a fitness trainer along with being a producer and you might see my show everyday fitness for everyday people. And yeah, just do some fucking squats. It may take two years but you'll get some ass. You know, for free. Now, the, the fucking coupe de grace of the whole episode, the thing that made me decide, okay, I want to do a review of this episode. When, when you've got, you know, oh shit, get his three women together. Now, his fiance, I know his fiance, let me see. Let me see, what's his fiance now? Anya? Is her name Anya? You know, I can't remember uh, what her name is. That's how much I care about her. But, you know, his fiance, let's just call the bitch the fiance. Um, you know, she's like in my ear now talking about, oh, I hate that title, baby mama. Bitch, you're a baby mama. You didn't make him put a condom on. You didn't take the, the you know, stick nothing in your pussy to prevent it. You know, you didn't, you know, put any spermicidal shit up in there to kill sperm. You know, you didn't take the pill. You know, you knew this motherfucker had two kids. And now, yes, you're a baby mama. And, you know... He's got the fucking rainbow baby mama squad now. He's got a white baby mama, a black baby mama, and a Hispanic, Latina baby mama. You know, I know what that motherfucker doing. When I was his age, I fucked the whole fucking rainbow myself just because I was curious. Yes, I did. I fucked everything. Just because I was curious about what every race was like sexually. Now, of course, I'm older now, and I know just because I, you know, fucking Asian doesn't mean that all Asians fuck the same, you know. They all scream, Sam's got a big dick, but other than that. <laughs> yeah, he decided to do the whole fucking rainbow. And, you know, his fiance, I wish I could remember her name, I think Anya or something. You know, she um, basically, you know, came there ready to fight, very defensive ready to get up in their shit over her man and she's going to tell it like it is and put these bitches in their place 
She's not trying to be the fucking Brady Bunch. She's not trying to be Sister Wives. She came there to do a reality TV show fight five months pregnant. You know, she's ready to get it in with these bitches. You know, and they all look and they show up like the white girl. She is cool. I mean, put that out there. The white girl's cool. She's like, I fucked this motherfucker and had a baby bomb and I'm going to do right by my child and I'm going to try to make sure my child gets to see her father and I get a check from VH1 for having some screen time but I'm not stupid and the same way and this happens with a lot of women when they get with a guy who's cheated who they're sleeping with you know somebody who's married whatever it is you know then he always says wife is horrible you're great you know, because you're not giving me shit. So, you're a princess. And then, you know, I'm going to give you everything and I'm going to do everything for you. And then, you know, they think, oh, it's all, first of all, in a relationship, it's never one-sided. It's a little bit of both. You know, I know one person, I can say, it really does seem like his wife is pretty much the major problem in a relationship. I see where he's coming from. But when you're coming to that situation, you can't necessarily just say like these women are the enemy they are not the enemy they are for you to learn from because the same shit he did to them is the same shit he's going to do to you i've seen a preview for the next episode he's ready to cheat with the next one all right so she's in there she immediately starts going in on a white girl who very nice ain't done shit to her didn't give her no attitude she's trying to let her know bitch i was you <laughs> I know who he is and she's like well you I know him they ain't even known each other a year she's talking about he's changed now I'll admit people change when I was younger 20 years ago I cheated I got cheated on I went through all that 20 year old bullshit now I'm older and I no longer go through that shit because I don't cheat because I feel like that's my I'm on my grown man shit now it's like if I don't want you you gonna bounce because I would rather get rid of you than cheat on you. Because if I'm ready to cheat on you, I don't want you. And that's just being cold and that's being real. So I don't cheat because I leave. <laughs> but, you know, this bitch ain't never done nothing to her. You know, and she came there with good intentions. And this girl just, like, got all dick up in her shit for no reason. And then the crazy one shows up. You know, the white girl name is Coley. And her and oh shit still have a connection because I have a really good friend who when we and her in the same room, everybody thinks we're fucking because we can talk without words. We just look at each other and we hold sentences. We're sitting there having a whole conversation with our eyes that don't have shit to do with nobody in the room. And we just give each other like that, that look like, you know, we on the same page. We know what we talked about, you know. And that's what Oh Shit and Coley was doing. They were looking at each other like, like she's like, he's never going to cheat again. And they're like, <laughs> that bitch. You know, and she finally excuses them. And he's right. We left and now she's probably even madder that I left with you because now I'm alone with you. And he leaves her alone, you know, with the crazy girl. You know, the girl who's been the maddest. So it's like, you know... You know, she wants to fight with this girl. And this girl went through so much shit with him. And remember, you know, you got to remember that this girl was still fucking him last season. So, last season was last year. So, you've had a baby, you're like five months pregnant, and you barely know him. And she was still fucking him within the same year that you were fucking him. Do the math. Please. Just one. Go back in time, look at season one, and you're like, oh yeah, he was fucking a bitch around the time he met me. So it's not like, you know, the kids are 5, 10, 15. No, these kids are young babies, you know. So, so you know, they really go in. And then the Latin girl, you know, she's just like crying. Instead of skip smacking a bitch and threatening to fight her and knocking tables over like she did before. She's actually trying to have a conversation with this bitch like, look, this is what he did to me. I'm trying to get over. I think maybe in six months, 
I'll be good, but right now, I'm not. You know, so, so she couldn't even accept that. And then the white girl basically gets out of Dodge. And then, you know, the black girl goes in on old shit. And he's like, who the fuck is this bitch? This isn't the girl I got engaged to. I got engaged to the girl with the squeaky voice like Michelle, who sounds like Minnie Mouse. You know, this little harpy ass bitch with pregnancy hormones. Who the fuck is this bitch? <laughs> Which is why he's going to cheat in the next episode. Okay. Karma. Karma! So, that's it for Black Ink Crew. I mean, it was so much fun watching it. And, you know, Walt is crying because he's having a baby with a woman he doesn't like and barely knows. You know, Puma and Caesar may go into business together. Caesar's talking about he's not going to tell him his idea so he don't steal it. And Puma's like, ha ha, I know. But... I kind of think for season three, that may be the way to get the two shops together is to go into something, some sort of business venture together. It brings all the cast back into the same orbit. Um, but, you know, to me, Black Ink Crew is still good. Um, I look forward to next week. And I'm going to show you something uh, from... I just did something we shot last weekend at the time of this filming. Um, last weekend we shot an action scene for my show, Phoenix Remains Taboo. And um, since I put the teaser on Facebook, I will put the teaser on at the end of this video. It's one minute long. Um, just, you know, like, comment, subscribe, tell me what you think. Um, one of my other vines, I think, is on this particular channel. So... I may. I also have a show called Phoenix Remains Twisted Reality, which is a comedy series that I'm doing. I may put some of those um, on this new YouTube page just so you can see it if you want. Um, and also I have Phoenix Remains Taboo, which is my mob series, which is very taboo. That's why there's gay characters and bisexual characters and lesbians and just like a lot of people fighting and, and martial arts and parkour and acrobatics and just a lot of shit and then um, later this summer I'll be back doing my um, soap opera Phoenix Tremaine's Thirsty and um, I'm working on another reality series with with you know somebody here locally um, contracted me to do and you know I'm just doing my thing I have a feeling some of my projects are really gonna stand out this time using this particular platform um, hope you enjoy my web series. Hope you enjoy my review. And um, I think I might do a review of Atlanta Housewives. So look out for that one. Um, if not, uh, I can't think of my next review. But I think I'm going to get back on it since uh, I should be able to upload more than 15 minutes. As you can see, I'm like 23 minutes in. So I'm going to sign off now because I don't think reviews really should be that long. Maybe 20 minutes. So I am out. Until next time, um, hey, start subscribing to me. You know, I, I gotta get my viewers back up. Peace.